This is the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and this is the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Two flagship smartphones from two of the most popular players in the world. People cross shop these devices all the time. So in today's video, I'm going to pit them against each other to see what each does well, where they drop the ball, and to find out which one's the better buy this year. Let's jump right in. First of all, let me check my bias at the door. I don't have any sponsorship with either company. I don't even have affiliate links for any of these devices in the description. However, in case you're not familiar with me or my channel, my daily driver of choice is this, the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Yeah, I know the Galaxy Bros and fandroids out there are probably rolling their eyes and clicking out the video as we speak. But look, personally, as a content creator, I find that the 15 Pro is a well well-rounded package for what I need specifically for video production and social media work. I'll get into my reasoning a little later on in the video, especially in the camera portion. But to preface, this video isn't my first rodeo. We take a look at a lot of Android smartphones on this channel throughout the year to stay up to date on what things are like on both sides of the fence. And I must say that there is plenty of stuff to the S24 Ultra that I wish that my 15 Pro had and also vice versa. First of all, I'm gonna judge the books by their cover. Let's talk about the designs. The S24 might be a tweaked version of the S23 Ultra, which was a tweaked version of the S22 Ultra, and so on and so forth. I honestly couldn't really give two shits about that, because this is a mass market phone that has to appeal to a broad audience. But keeping that in mind, in my opinion, this is about as good as a safe design can get. Actually, no, I think it's better than that. Maybe not so much from the back because I've always thought that this design was a bit too simple. I actually think that the iPhone looks marginally better from this standpoint, but at an angle and especially from the front, ooh, <laughs> the S24 Ultra takes the cake. I like this new matte titanium finish. It feels nice in the hands and does a very good job of rejecting smudges and scratches and should actually hold up even to drops. But but there is something about this new squared off design with its flat screen and thin bezels that really clicks with me. I don't know, it looks a bit more serious, more industrial looking compared to this rounded edge on the iPhone 15 Pro, though I see why Apple has done this. Hold the iPhone 15 Pro in your hand and it feels very comfortable. But take the S24 Ultra and these hard corners actually dig into your palms a considerable amount, which can feel uncomfortable, especially after longer usage. Though, it's not to say that people can't get used to it, it's just a comparison point between the two. I can especially get over these hard corners and how they feel, considering how good the screen looks because of it. Games, and especially video Video content look a tad more native on the Ultra than they do on the iPhone. I mean, if you really think about it, the edges of your TV frame and your local movie theater aren't rounded either, so I guess it kind of makes sense. In fact, even more so than previous generations of Ultra, this phone in particular feels the most like you're holding just pure screen. It's a very immersive experience, which sounds like some kind of buzzy thing that Samsung would advertise, but it really does feel like that. Something else that Samsung got absolutely right compared to the iPhone 15 Pro Max is a reduction in screen glare. I think the best way to demonstrate this is to use this camera right here. There's a film light directly on top of it, but if I angle the phones up here, you can see the glare on the Galaxy S24 Ultra is way less apparent than it is on the iPhone at a very similar angle. Oh my God, <laughs> you really can see that in camera, that's crazy. In harsher and tricky lighting conditions, this screen will be way easier to see. This on top of the fact that Samsung's OLED panel peaks at 2600 nits on the S24 Ultra, which is to say that it does a lot better outdoors when in the sun compared to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Not that the 15 Pro Max particularly had a problem with this, but the S24 Ultra 
Ultra will certainly perform much better out there. Where the screen on the 15 Pro Max excels is in its color management. The calibration is pretty much perfect. I use it for a lot of content creation. I've edited photos and TikToks on it. It's been very good. But the natural mode on the S24 Ultra is honestly not that far off. And if you're more of a content consumer, the vivid mode on here makes content come to life. I honestly think most people will dig it as stock. And if I turn off my creator brain, I'm inclined to agree. If I had to pick a favorite design between the iPhone 15 Pro, Pro Max and the S24 Ultra. Oh man, this is hard because I think I like the back of the iPhone, but the front of the Galaxy. If I could combine these two phones together, I would. I think overall, I still prefer the Galaxy more. Where things start to even out between the S24 Ultra and the iPhone 15 Pro Max is in performance. Now, I'm not much of a numbers guy, and I don't think that synthetic benchmarks are the best indicator of what users in the real world will actually experience, but it turns out that Snapdragon has caught up a significant amount to Apple Silicon in terms of raw performance. The A17 Pro in the 15 Pro Max still beats out the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy by a few percent when we're looking at Geekbench 6. But the margin is significantly smaller than what we've seen in previous generations, so that's really good to see. Unless you are going in with a magnifying glass, both of these phones game very well, and also hold up nicely in heavier tasks like video editing and photo editing in Lightroom. However, best of all, the battery life on these two phones are actually insane. For context, I can usually get a full day of moderate to heavy use on my iPhone 15 Pro Max, especially when I'm out at events like CES, where I'm filming stuff, editing stills, browsing socials, catching up on emails, writing documents, the whole deal. Truth be told, this guy is a true workhorse. And when I hopped over to the S24 Ultra, it more or less had the same level of stamina. The day after I got this phone at Unpacked, I went on a tour around the Bay Area with some other creators and spent a whole day putting this phone through its paces. I shot a lot of video, took a lot of stills, edited in Lightroom, and by the time 5 p.m. rolled around, it still had 40% battery left. And by the end of the night, after some dinner and a very long karaoke session, it was 2 a.m. And I was still at 20%. It's seriously impressive. I do want to see how well this holds up in the long term, maybe after a month or six months down the line, but it is clear that the S24 Ultra is an endurance champ. All right, let's talk about the cameras. Now for me, it's a bit of a complicated subject and fair warning, this section will be pretty long, but it is something that I deeply care about. And clearly I'm not the only one. Both Samsung and Apple put major emphasis on their cameras when it comes to their high end flagships. And everyone on the internet gets heated about it enough to where there are full videos on this. But here's the bottom line. Both of these phones genuinely offer impressive camera hardware. Here on Denki Channel, I've been pretty open and transparent about the fact that I use the iPhone 15 Pro Max as my primary content creation phone. And that has a lot to do with the idea that this phone takes a lot of photos and especially videos consistently well. The key word there being consistent, which is something that unfortunately I don't think I'm getting as much of with the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Don't get me wrong, this phone takes amazing photos most of the time. The quality out of the 200 megapixel main shooter is absolutely brilliant. That's in good lighting, low lighting, the colors look good out of the box, and there's plenty of detail to be had. Also, selfies look better on this phone than they do on the 15 Pro. Even the 3X and the controversial 50 megapixel 5X camera are still quite good. Particularly, portraits look amazing, shout out. However, in my experience, getting consistent results on the S24's stock camera has proven difficult, which is a shame if you're planning on using this device for content creation work in the professional space or social media. A lot of this comes as a result of even more AI processing that Samsung applies to your photo in the background, which is great when it works the way you want it to, but with little 
control of how much or how little it is doing. It can actually be frustrating when you, as the shooter, have to adapt to how the camera behaves, as I've found out in some off-the-cuff situations. This is certainly an extreme case considering the tricky lighting, but I was taking test photos at a concert the other day, which isn't an everyday scenario, but it also isn't that uncommon. Now, usually the stage lights and the colors they emit specifically scream on these mobile sensors. But look at how much the S24 punches up this image. It almost hurts my eyes looking at it, and it even clips the flare, which I've never seen computational photography do. Now, I'll be real, it's not like the iPhone did an amazing job on this shot either. However, it smoothened everything out and stayed in control of the scene. I also decided to help both cameras out and picked a better angle that was easier to work with. But same thing, here, the S24 cranks the magenta tones up and it loses detail along the way. Whereas the iPhone is way more reined in and natural looking, but also it looks like it got the shutter speed and dynamic range right. For a completely different scenario, I went on this train tour after Samsung unpacked with a bunch of other creators, and the conditions were basically perfect. The skies were cloudy with a little bit of sun peeking out, but overall, good lighting. The only odd variable here was that I was snapping photos out the side of the train, which was going about 20 to 30 miles an hour. However, with the amount of daylight peeking through, there was enough there to ramp the shutter speeds up to get sharp photos out of the main cameras from these two phones, even considering the speeds that we were going at. As for the results, I've come to expect the iPhone 15 Pro Max to handle scenarios like this very well, and it absolutely nailed it every single time. However, the S24 Ultra, I don't know what was up with it, but it was metering photos very weirdly to the point where they were either overexposed or had a comical amount of motion blur, which shouldn't have been an issue considering that there was clearly enough exposure headroom for faster shutter speeds. It also doesn't help whatsoever that the preview you get before taking stills on the S24 Ultra looks scuff as heck. So you really don't know what you're going to get until after you get the shot and let the phone process it. To be fair, this flow happens way quicker than it did on the S23 and S22, but it's not the most confidence-inspiring thing, especially if you happen to already be used to the immediate and simple experience of taking photos on the iPhone. These thoughts also extend to filming videos as well. Just like with the stills, the Samsung takes excellent video. In fact, I like the stabilization on it more than what I get standard on the iPhone. However, even considering that, shooting videos on the 15 Pro is a way more predictable experience than on the Ultra. The way the image looks and the dynamic range is all consistent. I love how smooth it is to go between the lenses to zoom in and out. And all of this is super valuable when using it as a professional tool. Also, this is not mentioning the fact that the 15 Pro Max has ProRes codec recording and Asus certified log picture profile as well, which has truly made the iPhone a beast of a content creator phone that actually pairs well with even the studio cameras that we have here in the office. I guess if I had to boil down the experience that I've had with the S24 camera, generally speaking, it feels like the software just isn't finished. Which I guess, go figure, this phone is being tested before the actual release date. Samsung technically seeds retail-ready units out to reviewers, but the hope is that they improve the camera via firmware as they get closer and closer to release, or at least not too long after launch. Fingers crossed, because truth be told, there is a lot of potential on these cameras, but I think they just need that extra step. If you thought that cameras were already a nuanced subject, we still haven't touched on software. To be fair, a lot of it is stuff we already know. iOS is simple to use, almost comically so, but with a very controlled curated experience, along with a tight ecosystem of products that make for a consistent 
and predictable experience, there is a lot of utility to be had here if you don't particularly care about customization. Android, on the other hand, can be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. The option is there for you, and that's kind of the key, the fact that you have options. However, there is a lot of power in choice, which can be annoying to maintain or maximize the potential of. Put the two together, and honestly, they are both great in their own right. Though, on the S24 Ultra, of course, the asterisk here is that it's running the latest version of One UI, which is all about AI. I actually mentioned this in my first impressions video of this phone, which you guys definitely took a liking to. However, I still stand by my thoughts on that video. As gimmicky as these new features might seem, if there's anything that I missed going back to my iPhone after using the S24 Ultra for a few days, it's features like that new circle to search. I couldn't give two sh if it's a derivative of Google Lens, or that it was based off of a feature on Android years ago, or the fact that it's going to be on some older Galaxy phones and Pixels. What matters to me is that it's easy to access, the fact that it's being advertised front and center so that more people actually use this goddamn thing so the feature isn't forgotten about by Google in about five seconds. But most importantly, this thing is something that Android has and iPhone doesn't because it is a Google thing. And I'm sure Apple will do their own AI push at some point in the not too distant future. But for right now, there's only a minimal emphasis on it. And that is probably the biggest strength on the Galaxy right now on the software side. Perhaps this is a good thing for you, depending on who you are, but I'm pretty open to seeing what clever tricks companies will come up with down the line. Because this AI push is happening whether you like it or not. So you might as well reap the benefits or wear yourself out trying to avoid it. Otherwise, at the end of the day, whether you are looking at the S24 Ultra or iPhone 15 Pro Max, you really can't go wrong. However, I still prefer the simplicity and consistency out of this 15 Pro Max. But let me know what you think in the comments below, which phone you prefer. And otherwise, thanks for watching this video on Denki Channel.